Sure. Okay. Well, I've been making games for about 20 years at this point. Right. Long time. Um, I studied art and animation mm -hmm. at university at one of Australia's first game development courses. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was the first, but it was one of only two available at the time. Oh, wow. um, now, now every university's got a game game design course, mm -hmm. and game art course, game program, everything. At the time, there was there was like two places that offered game dev courses mm -hmm. when I left high school, and and only one of them was in in, in uh, Brisbane. Mm -hmm. So, so I did that, and um, even then, it wasn't really a game development course. It mm -hmm. was in order to get accredited with the government because no such thing existed at this point. They basically took a collection of different art and animation units and sort of like tried to fudge them around to make them game orientated right, so they could still right. give me a degree at the end of it or a mm -hmm. diploma and a degree. Um, so it wasn't, definitely wasn't the best. <laughs> um, I learned a lot, like don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but um, certainly the, the, the courses that are out there now, um, I'm sure, are, are much more specifically targeted and much better at, mm. at teaching design and, and game development than the one I did back then. Um, but yeah, I studied art and animation. Um, I found that I had a liking for level development, uh, mm. level uh, environment art. So most of the course focused on, say, character art mm -hmm. um, and character animation. Uh, but there was a couple of units where we did environment stuff, and and I found I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. So when I left university, uh, when I graduated, I, I focused on that. So I went for, <laughs> I actually went in for a job interview at Chrome Studios up in Brisbane on the very last day of my degree. Mm -hmm. So I basically went in the morning, did the job interview, got off of the job. And then went into class to do my last class um, before end of end of degree. So that was kind of fun. Um, yeah, so I got hired at Chrome as an environment artist. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked on a uh, Spyro the Dragon. So it was a new beginning. It was the the Spyro reboot. So okay, um, the the very old viewers might remember, say, Spyro on the PlayStation One. Mm -hmm. um, I made the Spyro. Or worked on the Spyro reboot. Oh, that, that one! Out. Yeah, yeah, I do remember this one. Yeah, it came out on Xbox, GameCube, and I think would have been PS2 at the time. Yes, yes. Um, so I got—I was a junior artist. I got hired on that. I was on that for like mm -hmm. the last six months of its development. So it was largely complete by the time I started on it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I got to play. I got to build a little bit of that, which was fun. Mm -hmm. um, I then worked on a bunch of other games at Chrome. Uh, various different license titles. Usually, uh, I didn't do any of the the in-house IP titles. So that was usually a different team did that. <laughs> so, yeah, got a bit of work on on, on a Star Wars game, mm -hmm. which was fun. That was nice um, to have that on the resume. Uh, uh, then, yeah, then the global financial crisis hit uh, back in the 2010s, uh, where suddenly all the money dried up. Mm -hmm. And the Australian games industry collapsed. Um, everybody lost their jobs. Everyone, all the companies shut down. We were working on the Happy Feet 2, the video game at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so Happy Feet, directed by George Miller of Mad Max. Um, perhaps what best known for Mad Max, but also made uh, Happy Feet. And he was making Happy Feet 2, the movie, at the time. Mm -hmm. And we were making the video game for that. And uh, that's when Chrome shut down at that point in time. Mm -hmm. um, but my understanding was, this is my understanding anyway, uh, Warner Brothers was keen to see the game actually get com completed to tie mm -hmm. in with the movie. So thanks to the work of the producer on our team at the time, working with Warner Brothers, um, they managed to organize uh, a new studio which got became called uh, KMM Games, Kenley mm -hmm. Miller Mitchell. Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, Miller, as in George Miller, the director, and I actually don't remember the other two, but it's their film studio. It's Kenny Miller Mitchell as their film studio. Um, we became KMM KM Games, their game mm -hmm. studio. Um, so basically, I was kind of in limbo for a week or two uh, until that all got confirmed, and then I came back in and I found myself sitting right back in my same seat at Chrome, where I just was, 
two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. But now I'm working for KMM Games, not Chrome. Uh, working on the same game as I was at Chrome. So that oh, was a weird. LA it was a weird time. Okay. Okay. LA Noir? No, that was um. That's what it's saying. Oh, they might have got no. That no, there was some like. Did something on it? I I don't know. Maybe. No. I forget how that worked out. No, they. <clears throat> I think there was um some sort of ownership changed okay. hands or something at some point. I, I'm not sure exactly what it was. Okay, this is confusing then. <laughs> uh, LNOR was Team Bondi. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. It was, and they got eventually bought by Rockstar. Ro- mm-hmm. Rocksteady. No, yeah, Rockstar. Sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. I think Warner Brothers or Cameo or someone was involved in it somehow, <laughs> but no. Uh, we, we were the KMM studio, and uh, yeah, we made Happy Feet. We were told oh, we're totally going to keep you on. We're going to get another project for you. We're going to do more. I don't think anybody believed they were going to keep us on afterwards. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, we shipped Happy Feet and they shut down the studio. At least from what I'm reading here, it says <laughs> that some Team Bondi people were transferred over to KMM, a subsidiary, a, a subsidiary of it or something. I, I don't know. It, yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm it not sounds sure confusing. Um, yeah. I thought the name Chrome Studios sounded familiar. I, I, I love the title. It has many Tiger games. I I, didn't, I knew I recognized the name for some reason. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so that's that's what they're most known for, obviously, mm-hmm. um, Tyler Games. And, which I don't know if it's still the case, but it was like the highest rated game on Steam when they did the re-release of it, <laughs> which is which is hilarious and, and <laughs> wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I never worked on any of the Tiger Games, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I, I started there, uh, I think, just before or after Tie 3 launched. Mm-hmm. I think it was just before, so yeah. Yeah, and that was the... Yeah, and that was the last one they did until they did, like, the 2D one years later. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 2005, they released um, TIE 3. Yeah. Yeah, I started in 2004, I believe. So Okay, been okay so it would have been, like, most of the way through production, but you're <clears> on a different team. Yeah. Yeah, Chrome had quite a lot of people. There was like At its peak, it was, like, 400 people <laughs> across the country because we had... Chrome had, like, had multiple studios at one point. Mm-hmm. Jeez, but even in, the building where, even in the building where we were situated in Fortitude Valley... Mm-hmm. It was like a four-story building, and there was like a different team on every floor, right? Mm-hmm. So you had like the engine team that built Chrome's proprietary engine up on the top floor. The next floor down was the team I was on. Mm-hmm. Um, then you get the next level had we we often called them the Hellboy team because they worked on the Hellboy game and they went on and did others, but we always just called them the Hellboy team. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you had a lower floor as well, which I I don't remember who was down there. Um, I know, I know. Halfbrick was down there at one stage before Halfbrick. When Halfbrick was very, very new, Halfbrick made Fruit Ninja mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and Jetpack Joyride and stuff. Before they went on and found that kind of success, um, they were working on like the GBA versions of like Ty- Tasmanian Tiger and stuff. And before mm-hmm. they had their own studio, they worked out of the basement of Chrome. <laughs> oh, that's that's so sad. What happened then? Like I I didn't re- I, I didn't realize how big Chrome was before before the global financial crisis. Yeah, it was huge. Um, uh, yeah, one of the um, <clears throat> one of the designers there, uh, he would relate a story where he remembered um, when when Chrome shut down and lost a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, the same day that that happened, some I don't know what it was. It might have been like a another another company. Mm-hmm. Uh, went out of business, not games related, something else entirely, where maybe like like a hundred people lost their job, mm-hmm. and and politicians were all over it at the time, but not a word about the four hundred people that just, or even more than that in the Australian game industry, because Chrome was like the last one to shut down. Mm-hmm. Before that, you'd lost Pandemic, you'd lost freaking uh, THQ, and and a bunch of others as well had gone. I think um, Chrome was the last to shut down before Sega went a few years later, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, it was Creative Assembly when became Sega. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and and he was saying, yeah, he would basically say that you know he kind of from that inter- he, from that incident he came to realize uh, how little uh, the Australian government <laughs> cared about games, basically, mm-hmm. um, and how little the industry meant to them. Because when when a company of you know eighty to hundred people shuts down, they can they can put on their yellow the high vis vest and their hard hat and and go to the site and and be outraged about it. And, and cry crocodile politician tears, but when 400 people uh, working in games lose their jobs, yeah, not a peep. Right. So, 
Um, I think things have changed a bit since then. Um, they they care enough that we now have grants, which is great. That took a long, long time and a lot of hard work by people to make them happen. And I'm thankful for that, partly because I'm the recipient of one of those grants. So, you know, um, can't complain. So, yeah, definitely things are better than they were. Um, but it still does seem like that, you know, in, unless a politician can can stand somewhere with a hard hat and a high-vis vest, uh, they don't care. <laughs> right. 